Hey folks, it's us, podcasting wonderkins John Bishop and Lucas Southworth. Although this is a podcast about cars, it is not age-appropriate for the target demographic of these films, as we usually end up talking about the reproductive organs of Lightning McQueen. Alright, now let's take a look under the hood. Welcome to the Kachat. It's the only podcast. That's it. It's the only one. Well, at least now it is. Now it's the only yeah. one. Yeah, we, we got together with everyone. Uh, the McElroys were there. Uh, Conan O'Brien does a, a podcast, so he's he was there. Other podcasters, you know them. Mark Marin. that was a pool. That makes me sound smart because he does a smart person podcast. But we Joe were all Rogan, there. who's got thousands yeah. of episodes. Uh, yes, there's... he sure does. This American Life, that's a big one. Yes. Boy, howdy. Ira Glass, I want to say. Not that Dan Harmon cool. anymore. His is over. Ah, that's a shame. Yeah, we, we all got together and we were like, there are too many podcasts for just this week. Let's just have one. And uh, funnily enough, uh, it was Ira Glass said, hey, what about the chat? Let's give these boys a chance. <laughs> so this week we are the only podcast. Uh, yep, thank you to one. everyone. To everyone for uh, tuning in. Uh, since thank you for like feed. for like everything, because quite frankly, this has got to be just upsetting the entire industry. Because like realistically, that's that is a lot of ad revenue going nowhere. Because it's not like it's going to us. It's just no one's getting paid for a week. Oh yeah, and we don't get paid any weeks, so this isn't that different for us. But like for everyone else, it, it's it's pretty big deal. Uh, I mean, we could have been paid. We could have been paid if, you know, a certain someone didn't get 1%, which brings me to my not very fun fact of the day. Andrew Yang only got 1%. He only got 1% in the caucus. Yeah, he doesn't have a good name recognition, bud. I was going real quick to continue our stupid joke. I did want to say, since we're the only podcast that does de facto make us the only podcast brave enough to ask the question, hey, what's up with the cars? Also, I'm Lucas and he's John. But yeah, he didn't do well in the caucus. That's fair, bud. And this week we're getting political. <laughs> it's true. So Andrew Yang, hashtag Yang Gang, sure, probably <laughs> over. He hasn't officially, at this point, he hasn't officially dropped out, but 1%, man. <sighs> All he wanted to do was give everybody $1,000. Yeah, I get it. I like him fine. I like other candidates more, but I would be happy to vote for him, unlike certain Joe Bidens I know. Uh, (laughs) Obviously, if Biden gets the nomination, I'm going to vote for him. Vote blue no matter who. Uh, But anyway. (laughs) You say that, and then good old Donnie J is going to switch to blue. (laughs) Ah, yeah. Or that will make me forced to vote for Mike Bloomberg, who is just another billionaire. He's just another billionaire. Wow! Uh, so, <laughs> cool. so many billionaires. Oh, At, boy. Just, just as a, I don't know, fun fact. Not very fun fact. I'll do one. It's Thursday, the sixth. Uh, the caucus was on Sunday or Monday. I don't remember because it seems like seventy years ago, and they still well, don't have the full results out. It couldn't have been on Sunday because, as we all know, that was the big one. Oh, the uh, game we're probably not legally allowed to say the name of? Yeah, the the, the, the football one. one. I don't know if we're allowed to call it football. I think we're probably allowed to. Go. I think we're allowed to say the name of the game. I'm just so scared because no one else does. They all call it the big game for, <laughs> I guess, fear of litigation. <laughs> but See, I, I've never actually heard of someone being sued for it. I've just heard that you could be sued for it. And that's spooky. Yeah, I've just heard that's why everyone calls it the big game when they're doing it in some sort of official capacity. We are talking about politics and cars in this one. That's what we've decided to do with our time this week. And you mentioned that we still don't have the results, and which brings me to my, I don't know if this is fun or not, fact of the week. 
uh, good old Pete Buttigieg uh, declared that he had won before the results were in, and it's they're, they're still not in. Yeah, and it's starting to look like he maybe didn't win. Yep. Which, I mean, if we're just going to be completely transparent with our political views, would be fine by me. He's not much better than Joe Biden in terms of being a centrist. Uh? <laughs> All right, so it says... <laughs> Uh, they this were is the updated. One where we just talk about our own political views for a while. <laughs> okay, so cool. the the caucus results were updated uh, at six fifty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, like, yep. What? And one that minute means, ago. Okay, so it's it's Bernie tied with Pete Buttigieg, and then behind both of them significantly is Elizabeth Warren, and then less than half of her is Joe Biden. And then half of him is Amy Klobuchar. No I can't help you. I have no idea how to say her name. I've never heard it said out loud somehow. And then everyone else has zero. <laughs> yeah. He probably got some votes. He just didn't get some of the fancy votes that the caucus has that I don't understand. Delegates. Yeah, but they do delegates. like a bunch of nonsense. I, I don't know. It's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. Well... So Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg look like they're they're going for it. Elizabeth Warren might have a chance. I would be happy about two of those three outcomes. I would be happy if somehow Andrew Yang pulled it out, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, that's fair, bud. Anyway, yeah. do you want to stop <laughs> potentially alienating our listeners and talk about car politics? All right. Uh, so <laughs> car politics. Time for yeah. a question from Liz. Cool. Love it. How do they shake hands? Okay. Okay. Yep, that's it. How do they uh, shake hands? No, I'm not going to say the other part of your question. How do they shake hands, Lucas? Are you silencing one of the Liz's and her questions? I'll never tell. Lizzie, I know you can't hear me, but just shout the question and I'll leave it in. I'm going to text her. I don't you think you need me. to. I don't think you need to. Is she there with you? She, I, I, I feel, I feel a presence in the room. She texted me, what are their formalities during meetings? That's a good question. She also says, frick John Bishop, which is a good statement also. Thank you, Lizzie, uh, John's wife. <laughs> I think that's a good question that will right. lead into how do they shake hands that Let's... they don't have. Let's let's uh, talk about how this how this question came to be. I asked, "Do you have any questions about car politics?" And then she proceeded to just make a bunch of car puns. And uh, then I said, "Yeah, but like, do you have any actual questions?" To which she responded, "No." I was like, oh, "Is there in anything?" She's like, well, "What do you want me to ask?" It was like, "Just do you have any questions about politics in the cars universe?" To which she responded, "No, I never even think." Which I feel like she was going to say. I never even think about cars, but that would be ridiculous because how could she not think about cars when she's married to the host of the Kachat? I'm sorry. I, uh, all oh, that's great. She is still texting me the car puns now, uh, including Democars and Republicars, which Republicars works a little better than Democars. And then we, the cars for the, oh, like we, the people for the people. Okay. Those are fine. <laughs> Okay, so we the people, I, it's not for the people after that, is it? No, we the people in order to form a more perfect union, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. it's by the people for the people. Now she's oh, texting. By really the good. cars for the cars. I'm sure she is. I'm excited about this energy she's brought into this episode of our podcast. Uh, she's <laughs> texted me. She can just say these things. I believe she's in the room with John. So if she wanted to, she could just say this. She does say, I'm here to have fun, not to be correct. Frick you, Lucas Southworth. So she's turned that on its head. I was very excited about her telling her husband Frick, but now she's told me Frick. And it's a whole thing. Everybody's getting a frick. We are. Okay, we deserve it. Uh, you want to answer her, her question from her? <laughs> Lucas, they ain't got no hands. They don't. They really don't. So I feel like that rules out them shaking hands with each other. I think that's They're all fish. some Howie Mandels. They bump wheels or tires. I think I have seen them bump wheels with each other. Uh, okay, one last one, and then I'm going to have to stop reading these texts at some point. She does say, 
Not Liz. Liz doesn't d- get a frick because I love Liz. Oh, okay. Speaking to my girlfriend who can probably hear me talking, but maybe isn't listening enough to register that I've said her name. So anyway, yeah, they don't have hands. <laughs> so they don't I think the, have hands. the sort of t- the tire bump, I think, is a good one. Uh, they could sort of do like a bow situation in mm-hmm. which they, you know, lower themselves hydraulically a little bit or just with their like weirdly movable bodies so i think that's perfectly reasonable Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't i mean they could just like kiss each other or touch tongues or something but i don't think that would make out yeah what you're what you're proposing is that the cars instead of shaking hands just just tongue punch for a bit now i'm not sure that's what i was proposing i was saying they could touch tongues you heard it here first Folks, Lucas thinks that cars make out instead of shake hands. Well, I don't think they shake hands, so ha- that is half correct. I-, I would call it around 58% correct, so I don't know, close enough. It's uh, better than nothing. That's for sure. But yeah, I don't know. I'd say they tire bump, both casually and not casually, but like f- in formal situations, they like maybe, I don't know, they wouldn't shake it. They could like run the tire a little bit. They'd need front wheel drive to do that, though. Hmm. On a twisted web. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Thank you for listening, folks. Uh, remember to vote. Just vote. Yes, please. Please. I, I'm pledging now that it will not be the last time we say this. Please participate in our democracy. Someone has to fix this, and it has to be us because they're not going to do it. So please vote. But especially no, it's people, not the end of the podcast. <laughs> anyone listening to this, I don't care if you're American or not, find a way. Just vote in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Participate in your country's democracy also if you're listening, listening to this outside of the United States, but especially here. It'd be pretty cool if you uh, participated in our democracy and uh, voted blue no matter who. Ah, boy, howdy. Yeah, I, it's our podcast. I'll say what I want. So, politics in. <laughs> In the Cars universe. Yes. I feel like there's an interesting thing there about, you said this multiple times so far, vote blue no matter who. Do you think that every single Democrat is blue? Okay. Huh. They maybe have painted themselves blue or, hmm. but like in in optics, like when you go on the debate stage, you don't always want to be wearing the blue tie if you're the Democrat, you know, or or the blue, uh, like whatever. Well, oftentimes, Democrats will wear red to debates. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> what an engaging blue, podcast we have. <laughs> blue is supposed to note, denote that you are trustworthy and uh, like a good, <coughs> earnest person. And red shows that you are a leader and that you have power. Yeah. So if I'd have to guess whatever their sort of message they're going for, they do like a lot of uh, probably a lot more uh, like testing, like audience testing. There's a better word for that, but I can't think of it right now in which they are like show like potential voters like pictures of the car the the candidate the car dent that's nothing the the van dent mm, i'm just going to stick with candidate <laughs> uh the candidate uh in different like paint jobs to see how they react how they feel with them i'd say they probably do even more than that than like our actual real world uh candidates do with like their ties and outfits and whatnot hmm Okay, okay, okay. Now, do we think that it would be a, like a faux pas for one of them to be wearing like white walled tires? Because as far as I'm aware, those are like some fancy old style tire shoes in this universe. And one thing that I can say about presidential fashion and just fashion in politics in general is pretty much always just like bland. You wear a suit. Yeah, and it can't be tan or they'll get mad at you if you're the president, I guess. All right, Lucas, hmm. I'm going to propose yeah, what, sorry. I'm going to propose <laughs> a vehicle Blacked that out. is our current president, okay? Okay, sure. I'm going to just throw Whatever. this out there cuz it seems too perfect to not say what if President Trump in the Cars universe is good old the general or the general Lee? Give me I a can second. hear every keystroke. Ah, Beautiful. yes. Okay. I've the, as in the 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 Dukes of the Hazard of, of yes. the Duke boys. Yes. Okay. 
because here's here's the reasons I think this is perfect. It's an older vehicle. It's not an old vehicle, but it's an older vehicle. It's, it's an uh, orange vehicle. It's orange, which is beautiful. Uh, it's like super tacky and obnoxious. And also it uh, it's not supposed to be racist, but it's racist. I, I like it, except for the, the General Lee is like a true southern car in like all of the bad ways and some of the good ways. And Trump isn't. He just pretends to be he doesn't pretend to be southern but he pretends to understand the plight of those living in rural america when yes he... because if there's one thing i can feel from uh, president donald j trump it's relatability to the common man yeah he lives in a gold house uh in a tower with his name on it uh but <laughs> and his skin anyway. is cheeto dust yes but i would say i i he's like just a really gaudy like, I don't know, Ro- Rolls Royce or something that has painted himself to look like the General Lee is what I would change that to. See, I would agree to that. But instead, I think it's he is like this really gaudy uh, Rolls Royce who has had his entire body changed to look exactly like the General Lee and also just kind of has the same horn. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, that that works. But it sounds off. Like you've yeah. heard the general Lee horn enough and you know like that's not actually what that sounds like, but I can't place why. It's somehow like too high and too low and it just goes on for way too long. The rhythm slightly off maybe, you know. Mhm. It yeah, it somehow just good to makes me. less sense. Like you know it's it's making sounds but Are they really sounds? Ah, man. Speaking of the president of the United States, it's time for the... I had one. Oh, yeah. The Gay Rights Quote of the Week. Okay. That that name submitted by number one fan faith. Yes, you can push your personal agendas with the wiki quote of the day as long as we agree with them. Uh, So, so, okay. So this this isn't a quote about gay rights. It's... It's no, just... it's the wiki quote of the it's the wiki <laughs> quote of the day. It's Lucas, just... I thought this was a new thing, but okay, give me the gay rights quote of the week. Uh, I am not qualified to make that a regular segment, or I would. Uh, but this one, I actually have two. I've been having a hard time choosing between them lately, and I've just been doing two, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. All right. Our first one comes from. Uh, world of cars drive in dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash president underscore of underscore the underscore united underscore underscore states. Wait, did you just say underscore underscore? I just messed up saying underscore the first time, so I said it right again. It's good that I brought attention to that because, yeah, Lord <laughs> knows I couldn't have cut it out. Technology is not there yet. Uh, but <laughs> this one, uh, this is one of my favorite kinds of wiki pages in that i get to read the entirety of it nice (laughs) this one in its entirety again reads the president of the united states is the head of state and head of government of the united states on the cover of issue number three of of course adventures of toe mater mater was shown as president (laughs) okay i spent a good half hour trying to find this comic and I could only, I couldn't find any sort of previews or stills from it, but I'm probably going to buy this comic and have it sent to my home to see how and why Mater is the president of the United States. But for now, that's all you get. Apparently, Mater's the president in a comic book once, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, uh, that's good. And in between these wiki quotes, I'm going to throw in the fun fact of the day. Go one for of the it. nothing matters. <laughs> one of the Duke boys was named Luke. Oh, what's his name? Luke Duke? His name's Luke was, Duke. That's like uh, Rusty Rusties. There's Bo Duke. There's Daisy Duke, which everyone knows. There's Boss Hog, which everyone knows. And then there's Luke Duke. It's pretty bad. Uh, oh, boy. Okay, so yeah, go go ahead and give me that, that second uh, gay rights <laughs> quote of the week. Sure, man. Uh, this one's fast and loose uh this one comes to us from pixar.fandom.com no it doesn't it comes from pixarcars.fandom.com slash wiki slash 
Sven underscore <laughs> Swartenhummer parentheses oh, no. get underscore two underscore the underscore choppa. <laughs> Tell me about this, so, this character. You remember in Cars 1 how they did the weird like like three cameos in, in a row and one's Jay Limo and an- another one is like it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he's the governor. He, he's, he's a Hummer. And he says, uh, Lightning McQueen must be found at all costs. Lucas, I was just transported. Thank you. That's like one one impersonation I can almost do a little bit. The um, mods of PixarCars.Fandom.com have not done a great job of moderating this specific page as someone has changed the title of it from just Sven, because he doesn't have an official last name, because I went to several different Cars wikis as I know how to do now in this point in my life is cross check different cars wikis but anyway they did make his last name swarton hummer which is a pretty good pun it's not his real name and then they put in parentheses get to the choppa <laughs> in the title of this one they also say he's voiced by arnold schwarzenegger which he fully isn't so this, is... this one's just full, full of misinformation which is fun this is so good yes uh but the bio it's carried over into the bio. I I did also look this one up. Besides them adding the words get to the choppa into the bio, it is their actual bio, so I'll read that. Sven slash get to the choppa didn't plan to go into politics. In fact, he started off as an automotive mo- model. He was crowned Mr. Automotive, a record seven times. This led to roles in films like Roll Over and Die, Roll Over and Die 2, and Welcome to the Auto Bomb, which is a fantastic pun uh, on the Autobahn. But anyway, he soon made the natural leap from acting to politics, winning elections and looking good while doing it. Nice. Uh, yeah, so that's the equivalent of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Cars universe, who was also the governor of California. And one thing I did actually notice, this has nothing to do with politics at uh, aside from it being related to a governor of California, I did go back and watch the little scene that he's in, and it's literally for like two seconds. But in the background, there is a flag of California, and it still has the bear on it, but the bear hasn't been carified. It's just a normal bear that's on the flag. So they know what bears are, which again, nothing to do with politics, but I think, I don't know, something. The cars know what real bears look like. Lucas, They're I not will car say, bears. What is the uh, national animal of Ireland? National animal of Ireland? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know this off the top of my head, John. You don't? It's probably something obvious. I'm Googling it. It says the red deer, which I don't think that's what you think it is. Are you thinking of Scotland being the unicorn? No. Yeah, I was. <laughs> okay, cool. I always get those two confused because basically everything is Scotland that I think of. And I always just assume it's Ireland because Scotland can't be everything, but I guess it is. It's not true. You're a wonderful country, Ireland. I'm sorry Brexit is happening near you. Uh, but yeah. Right. Is, so, is I do get Ireland what you're saying. the one that is affected by Brexit, like severely because of the haves? Uh, with Northern Ireland and the hard border and the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, it could be. Scotland is also, of course, equally, Dang not it. equally, but in different ways affected by brexit as part of great britain but okay both so, are affected very much braveheart scotland scotland macbeth scotland yes kilts scotland yes uh, uh bagpipes scotland that's, that's scotland john okay i'm stopping the podcast name a thing about ireland Leprechauns. i don't care if it's stereotypical okay Leprechauns. that's what i thought you that yes that, that is ireland okay Let's stop talking about Ireland because it has nothing to do with cars, <laughs> except there are Irish cars, presumably. Uh, yep. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, like, I don't know, how they govern or elect their presumably elected officials? We know the Queen I of do. England exists. The Queen of England The royal exists. family the exists. The head of the Catholic Church exists. Yeah. So one thing I'm curious about. Sure. The original movie is Cars. It seems that the main we know that much. The main focus of the movies tends to be cars. Even in planes, you'll notice that in the crowds, there is just a massive percentage of that crowd 
Sure, there are planes there, but there are a lot of cars. It's making me think that most of the people on this world are cars. Yeah. And that's got me thinking, okay, so what is representation like in this world? Because okay. if we have the same buildings, the same like established uh, trends for governance and whatnot, do boats and planes get specific representatives because we've got our own like land-based nation the the sky folk have the sky and the water folk have the water does the but water this, have this... a representative is there just like an aquaman king of the ocean well one i very much hope so but i don't know that and t also the sky people can't stay in the sky like indefinitely so they 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 still live on the land or I don't know an aircraft they, carrier which is I don't know but, I feel but, like they could eat on the land and then stay in the sky because I'm pretty sure they can like sleep while flying. Why would they? Why would you think they could do that? No, no, yeah, he fell asleep and then crashed. That was it. Okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> bad things happen. I was thinking. I uh, remember him being asleep in the sky and like, no, wait, that was just before him falling to death. <laughs> That caused a bad thing to happen. And like the the car, the I mean, the planes in, you know, planes and planes, fire and rescue have like buildings they like stay in at night and presumably sleep in. Mm -hmm. so, they have hangers. Yeah. Just like, OK, so my my workplace, there is an R&D lab and it looks pretty much exactly like an airport hangar and it's massive and I love it. But like it really makes me think, OK, so. We manufacture this specific thing and we've got this like airport hangar set up. Why don't we also work with planes? It would. I think I see the connection you're making between the product your workplace produces and planes. And it's there, man. I get it. All right. So what's one thing that uh, politicians uh, have argued about for far too long? And quite frankly, the conservatives are being just absolutely ludicrous about this issue it's affecting the entire world man that's actually a lot of things specifically to do with the environment <laughs> i i could tell where you were leading me but gosh i was like hmm if i want to go back to me being very open with my political views i could say just about anything but yes <laughs> global warming is very much a worse issue in this one, as we've discussed. Okay, so it's it's got to be a huge issue, but no one's ever mentioned it, I don't think, in the Cars movies. So I gotta wonder, do you think they've solved it? Well, a big point of Cars 2 is they do, like, the, the weird, like, biofuel. And, and, like, it has, like, a vaguely environmentalist message. But I don't think they ever say anything about specifically uh, global warming. I think they just sort of frame it as like an oil bad biofuel good, but like the biofuel also blows up cars. See, <laughs> so. I kind of hope it doesn't have an environmentalist message because if it does, then it's the opposite of the message it should be saying. Because what it's saying is, hey, you never know. Maybe the reason people want alternative fuels is because they're evil and trying to kill you. <laughs> they want to they want to blow up your cars. Uh, but which I will was say, admittedly an issue with uh, hydrogen based cars. Hydrogen based a lot of things. That's an issue with uh, <laughs> hydrogen based but, vehicles. Kind of a risky, risky business. Yeah, if you can thread that needle, it's pretty good, but it's hard to do. But to counter sort of my own point about them not sticking the environmentalist message, which I fully don't think they do, Lightning ends up being saved because Sarge changes out his biofuel for a different organic fuel. Uh, so it's not like he saved it by making it just like gas. He just did a different also environmentally conscious option. Now, Lucas, you know, at least I hope you know what I'm going to have to say about that fuel what message that's mm. what message that's going for did you imply recently that Fillmore's fuel is drugs is that yep. what it is yep okay yeah that's that's not a pro environmentalist message that is a pro drugs message hey, hey man pork slip your friends dotes. slip your friends some drugs it's chill and they won't blow up oh oh boy there was a scandal in one of the planes movies where someone had an illegal fuel that means yeah. that lightning was racing with an illegal fuel. He blatantly cheated. 
Well, not of his they, own will, this, but like his team cheated. Yes, but like the fuel for the planes one was implied to be like performance enhancing, whereas I think Lightning's was just like a perfectly like it was just a different option to gasoline. I don't agree that it's drugs. I agree that Fillmore definitely does drugs. <laughs> uh, I just don't think fan. it's his fuel. <laughs> yes. Like, they, it that is not baseless. They make so many throwaway jokes about the fact that Fillmore is probably high at any given time mm-hmm. uh, for the parents in the crowd, but I don't think his fuel is the drugs. Okay, okay. So, so he was definitely high, is what you're saying. It's the opposite of what I'm saying, but you can say <laughs> what you want. Do you want to okay. say more things about global warming? I just, <laughs> Since we didn't really like, that's got to be it. a big issue, but it's not an issue at all, except in the second movie when the villain is trying to solve that problem. And Fillmore's always about organic, but he's more of like the, oh, let's do some crystal magic to heal you kind of hippie yeah. stuff. That's, again, I will agree with that part. But anyway, yeah, global warming has to. I, they can't have maybe they've made a lot of progress okay maybe they've made a lot of progress because the the ultimate plan of the lemons in cars 2 was we are going to spike the reputation of uh environmentally friendly fuels so people will go back to gasoline so maybe but i feel like in that like sense mu- it's more of a like dietary thing because it's it's like what America does with sugar is they just ignore that that's the problem for a lot of people in a lot of ways. Like, oh yeah, America has a massive problem with like heart disease. I wonder why. Must be all the fat in the food. No, the fat's actually decent for you in like reasonable amounts and you don't add that much fat to things. It's the sugar. It's the sugar. And people think that if you eat fat, that's how you get fat, which is interesting. It's not how that works because fat is made of carbohydrates which sugar is a very potent form of how to build fat if you eat fat it's really just gonna produce oil and like help your skin be healthy did you have a point about cars in there yeah america's really unhealthy with how it like (laughs) forces people to oh let's just ignore the fact that this is killing everyone and that we could do healthier things and take sugar out of everything but we're just gonna put sugar in everything and uh, we're going to try and make sure like people don't notice how bad that is for them. And I feel like Cars 2 is more of a message of we're going to get rid of all that health nonsense because, I mean, it's good enough for us. Yeah, and I mean, to, to me, that implies they've made, I don't know, an even bigger commitment in some ways by switching to like biofuel in that like, I don't know, if we switch to like some sort of like uh, environmentally friendly fuel in our cars... That doesn't super affect our lives, except maybe like the price point of it. But what about all the oil barons? Well, I don't, obviously I don't care about oil barons, uh, but, but like changing your diet is like a genuinely hard thing to do. And if they've like made this commitment to the point where these like crazy lemon oil barons are like, we've got to do something to make them go back to gasoline. That implies that the change has like, started to happen and it's gaining traction and like a lot of people are doing it and that's r- really good and, it's a good one and look I'm, I'm gonna do that thing that i sometimes do that is uncomfortable but sure. if you think about it the lemons were their point was a lot better than anyone's gonna acknowledge because some cars cannot accept organic fuels like that yeah like some cars cannot run off of these types of fuels older vehicles a lot of even newer vehicles aren't made for that some of them you have to get like really high octane it's just different fuels don't work in the same way and i'm thinking that these lemons i don't think it's a choice for them i don't think it's yeah. oh organic fuel will be fine i think it's more of a oh this is all we can consume they're not going to take this one from us which if you think about it like that this movie is even more tragic because if you remember, they were willing to just throw their bodies into the enemy, killing themselves and the enemy, or at least hurting them severely for the rest of their life. It makes a lot more sense if they're doing that because the other option is starving to death because the world is switching to a fuel 
that the man the manufacturer approves, but it's non compatible with older vehicles or the lemons. Yeah, and I mean, if we want to expound that further, it could be about a lot. Like I, going into your your sort of food metaphor, is like a lot of people in poor situations can either cannot afford to eat healthy, or they live in a food desert and cannot obtain healthy foods. Or if, like even if we want to bring it back to environmental environmentalism, a lot of people can't afford to do very green things. Mm-hmm. But also, it's pretty ridiculous to put personal blame on individuals for global warming when the problems big corporations and factories. The yeah, like if you want to if you want to do things to reduce your own carbon footprint, that's wonderful. But if we don't get corporations to do things, it doesn't matter. It's not your fault. It's theirs. Yeah. And the only reason it would be your fault is because you're one of seven to eight billion people supporting this industry. Yay. Nice. It's the same thing with food waste, by the way. Like, again, Mm -hmm. if you want to try to reduce your own personal food waste, that's great. Uh, That's on a micro scale. It won't affect the macro of massive corporate food waste. Absolutely. I don't know. Have we said much about cars? Like, uh, this episode? Eh, not really. It's their... They have governors. <laughs> they have governors? They have, they they have, have president. queen. They have... They have pope. governments, which is, you know... That is surprising something. enough. Uh, so, back to the food thing. Honestly, um, yeah. So, did you ever, <laughs> okay, did you ever man, figure out sure. about that story where Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow was trying to do the diet where you limit yourself to spending as much as the average person is able to to feed their family. I didn't hear about that. It sounds like some nonsense she'd be into, though. I think she lasted like a day, maybe a week. I don't know. But like she goes out shopping and then she brings back a bag of just these beautiful fresh fruits and veggies and greens and all that jazz. And then she takes a picture of it and says, this is all I could get with this money. How could anyone live off of this? And like, I'm, I'm happy about the support and the like effort and the heart that went into that. But also like there, you could get, I don't know, tens of thousands of calories more than she got based on the money that she spent, because you could get things like potatoes, which have a lot more calories than a bunch of celery. And a bunch of lettuce. Like Yeah, those aren't really famous for their caloric amounts. <laughs> Again, I'm not trying to like bash on her for it, because I, I really I mean, I'll bash admire... on Paltrow for some things. <laughs> for some things. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But for trying to make a statement about how some people need help, I'm all for that. Uh but it just really goes to show that Wealthy people really just, they don't get it. They don't understand that, like... Okay, so far be it from me to say that they don't understand the plight of the common man. But, like, it's so strange to me how unaware of how bad something can get people are. Yeah. Like, I don't think for a second that Donald Trump understands what it would be like to not have far more than he needs let alone yep. only having what he needs let alone like further than that could you imagine him ever having a thought of oh no i'm not gonna have enough money to eat yeah i i don't think that thought has i, I don't think the existence of people who have had that thought have has ever meant entered his mind let <sighs> alone the thought itself it i don't want to give him as much credit as the woman who just actually was that ignorant and said, let them eat cake because she didn't understand that you can't just have cake if you don't have food or money or supplies or people to give you cake. Oh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll make comparisons. from I, I'll do that. Cause I'll like just compare him to the people whose heads got cut off. Hmm. See, I'll I'll say he's that ignorant, but I won't say he's that like innocent about his ignorance. Oh yeah, he is malicious. He is purposely remained ignorant. He chooses to not think about poor people. Like it's not yes. just that he doesn't think about them. He actively avoids thinking about them 
because if he thought about them for a second, he might have less money because he could be earning money in that second. And say what you will about how, oh, when he became president, he didn't accept the paycheck. Yeah, but being president, like, really helps any business person. If you're the president, you can divert resources or, I don't know, have a presidency that will constantly give you more and more time on air, which will make people think about your company, which will make people feel more comfortable about investing in things that you own. You don't have to and, earn money directly for it to be very, very beneficial for you. And like, I will be the first to say, I don't really understand how like the economy works at any level, but I imagine the president could probably influence the in economy for his still existing business, we made Jimmy Carter give away his peanut farm. It was a farm with peanuts. Yep. He has a tower with his name in it. He has it, multiple towers with his name on them. It is illegal <sighs> to in any way help your own business ventures through the presidency. And he has done it many times. Oh, he's done a lot of legal things, but the Senate won't find him responsible for those. John, I'm spiraling. I mean, in order to find him responsible, they would have to accept, like, evidence, you know, like, witness testimony. Oh, I'm so angry all the time now, John. <laughs> I didn't Every know day. they could do that, Lucas. I didn't know they could just say, we're not going to accept evidence. Why would they? It's only a trial. <laughs> okay, so... And, like, what I had explained to me is, oh, the problem is, yeah, it's called a trial, but it's not a trial. It's more of like they get to say what they want and they get to choose what they're going to listen to. And apparently it's they make can just believe hour. not listen to anything that is a defamation of their <laughs> good, good Fuhrer's power. They can just say, uh, so I, if we're doing this, we're doing this. Multiple members of the Republican Senate said, I think he probably did it. And then they didn't vote to hear evidence about it. All right. So I will, I will give them the benefit of this. They were willing I'm not to accept, them, but you go ahead. They were willing to accept evidence so long as it wasn't the most concrete evidence that they could have, which is the people he was colluding with admitting to the collusion and stating that he was doing it with them. You know, the thing that he was on trial for. And then, John, he was on trial for two things, an abuse of power and then obstructing Congress. He obstructed Congress by not providing evidence that was subpoenaed from him. And then they got evidence in other ways. And But still, the thing with the Senate is they said, well, you didn't have evidence. Well, yeah, because he wouldn't give it to them, and that's what he's on trial for. You have evidence of that one from the lack of evidence. Oh, I'm just angry every day of my life. Every day of my life, I'm just a little bit angry all the time. And I wish that wasn't the case. Please vote. <laughs> Please, God, vote. But Lucas... What, John? <laughs> but Lucas, you hear from all of the Republicans... <clears throat> Would you rather it have sure. been uh, Hillary, the person yes. who also had been sub subpoenaed and just didn't provide those emails because they had already been deleted? To which I she say, he did that and worse, and also they didn't accept evidence, and also he's clearly twisting the system, and also he's done so many bad things that are definitely illegal and obvious, and no one's even considering pressing charges, and... He needs to be in jail for abuse of presidential power and <laughs> colluding with Let foreign power. Let alone powers. the things, the things he did before he was president. The I'm uh, the evidence that also exists for his crimes. He was he was always a crime man. Look at what evidence he man. paid to have that disappear. Uh, but he can't do that now. Man. It's not like he's still a billionaire. Oh wait. Well, at least he doesn't control, like, a major nation's entire economy. Oh, wait! Uh, our president's a crime man. Pretty cool. You remember when there was a different crime man named Richard Nixon, and then they, like, found out? And then he was like, ah, you got me. I'll go away now. <laughs> and then Wouldn't that have been fun? You know what would be good? Is if, if we elected that guy again, except 
much more stupid, but in like a powerful way. You know, the power that a child holds when they can just say, nah, uh, and you can't do anything to convince them. That kind of Let's power. Elect. Let's elect a child who is more morally bankrupt than Richard Nixon. <laughs> Is more morally bankrupt than Richard Nixon and has the strength of will and the uh, narcissism of a uh, like three year old, but without any of the semblance of uh, innocence that a child could have if that child had just murdered someone in front of you. Mm. I sure hope he doesn't win re election. That'd be, I'd be very sad and angry. Very angry. All right, Lucas. There is an actual bright side. Please, God, I would love it. <laughs> At least Mike Pence isn't president. <laughs> uh, yep, that's true. A man who that's advocates true. for the actual torture of human beings based on their, their sexuality. I think Mike Pence would at least be, I don't know, subtle about it, though. <laughs> like, see, he'd do see, crimes, but he would at least, like, I don't know. We wouldn't find out, and then he nothing happened. I'll I'll admit some painful ignorance I had before Trump was elected. Of you know, if Trump gets elected, at least he's gonna be like obvious about things because he's a dumb dumb man. And then I thought, you know, and if he's obvious about it, he'll get caught, and then something will happen. That's the continuation of that thought. But then he was a dumb dumb man, and he was obvious about things. And he very obviously did a lot of things. And then the Senate was just like, yeah, but like, I don't like that evidence. And nothing Let, happened. Let's be, let's be transparent. They said, yeah, but if we impeached a Republican president, that would hurt my career as a Republican. So. Would it though? Sorry. Would it though? Would impeaching it w- the blight of the Republican Party, <laughs> of which there are dozens, but he stands out. Far among the rest, far and away, he is the blightiest blight of the Republican Party. (sighs) Would that really impact them negatively if they were to be like, yeah, we renounce this man. He's bad. I mean, there would, if you're genuinely asking me, there is somehow still a sizable base that just (laughs) likes this guy. They like this crime man president, this crime president man. They're like, I like the cut of your jib. You just make fun of disabled reporters, and that's cool. And <laughs> I, it's something I've always wanted to do, I guess. I guess. You just openly hate immigrants, and that's pretty cool. And plus, this guy's going to get me some money. N- no, he's not. No, he's not. And statistically speaking, the people who are supporting him, he's giving you the l- like the least money. And do you want to know how I know that? It's because he's actively trying to get rid of anything that the democratic party has tried to give you he's taking those things away and you were happy about it because you think that that's better for you and it's not you lost health care you lost so many things <sighs> yep at least he true. didn't like intentionally try and ruin i don't know our education system because that's the only way that we're ever gonna like become a less ignorant people who can elect better people is if he doesn't no, John- do that Someone gave him a bunch of money and they don't know anything about education and now they're the, the, the Secretary of Education? Yeah, that's right. Oh, and he also supports, what was that guy? Matt Bevan? The guy who... Ooh, my boy Matty B! Let's get into local politics! I love it! <laughs> the guy who, who... Okay, so he refused to, to give out what he considered handouts. But he is a, a very wealthy man who is very well known for having inherited a bell company that burned to the ground. And then he got a huge handout of, oh, here's a lot more money for the insurance. And then here's a lot more money to help you rebuild, even though we don't need to do that. And then he just took all the money because why not take the money? He's rich, which means he gets to have all the money. (sighs) And then refused to acknowledge that he was actively trying to attack and destroy the education system in our state, which was already pretty, pretty hard on everyone because we're like, what, yeah. number 48 in education of 50 states? Oh, boy. Yeah. And yeah. You know what he did? Why he... pay the teachers what we've promised them? You know? Why, why pay them what we promised them? I don't know how you double down on saying no. 
the teachers are the bad guys. <laughs> the teachers are the bad people. How do you call every teacher in Kentucky thugs for asking for the oh, yeah. money you just stole from them? And while we're on Matt Bevan, Kentucky was like the poster child for Obamacare, for the Affordable Health Care Act. It was the ones, it was the state where it was working like the best. It was doing so much good in Kentucky. Mm, Maddie B came in. Let's gut that one. You know that opioid em- epidemic? Let's just let's just get rid of anything that's going to help people like take care of that. Let's get rid of anything that's going to help people out because, you know, people who are on drugs, it's not like people are only on drugs because they can't see a way to a better life. They're on drugs because they deserve... I don't... I can't even get into the mind of this madman. Why does he just want people to suffer? Why does he just... He likes the idea of there being an extreme divide between the lower and upper class and the middle class should all die, I guess? Yeah, and let me... Let me... One more thing about this, and then we've got to end this little rant we've done. But don't take this as... Gosh, I hate Kentucky. I love Kentucky. I am so proud to be from Kentucky. I just want so much for it. And gosh, people won't help these people. And they lie to them. And they mislead them. Gosh, it makes me just about more angry than anything in the world. So that's pretty cool. That's why I hate Matt Bevan. Oh, boy. (laughs) That's the title. That was the end of my little essay. (laughs) Politrux, this is why I hate Matt Bevan. Honestly, honestly. John, do you think that the Oval Office is uh, a wheel in cars? <laughs> I'm going to believe that Donald Trump doesn't exist in the Carsverse, and then I'm going to fund a portal to mo- let me move to the Carsverse, where I will be a freak of nature on display, but it will be better than living in the same universe as him. John, will- we've got to stop talking. <laughs> It'll make more sense than our own universe in which Donald Trump is president. In which, uh, the universe in which we've made a podcast about how little sense it makes <laughs> will make more sense than... Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I've tired myself out from being angry for too, from being too angry for too long, so I want to end the podcast now. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... You want... Okay, before we go, since we... I think literally the last 20 minutes were that. (laughs) Uh, Probably more like 10, 15 after I cut a lot of us saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, But (laughs) let's make one point about cars each before we go cars and government slash politics. I know we've made, I'm not saying we've made no points, but let's make at least one more each. All right. Uh, Elections would be weird because how do they vote? Uh, they can't write they they don't have they can't hold pins and like electronic voting has shown itself to be a nightmare visa of either <laughs> iowa caucus wait no 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 <laughs> and uh, uh but i guess my point is how do okay sure sure they vote and sure like it's easy for people to vote in a similar way to we how we do on our world how do like planes and larger vehicles and boats how do they vote because like they can't go on the land so easy yeah like we we always talk about how the cars don't have hands but like when you think about it the boats have even less hands they have less hands and also like are on the water. really big ones they don't they, there's no getting them out of the water the really big ones no you think you think like Aircraft carriers are really angry about like duck boats, you know, the boats with wheels that can go. You think that, huh? Let's talk about duck boats. I'll cut out some of us yelling. Okay, <laughs> let's so, talk about duck boats. Duck boat. Ooh. It's just like a boat with wheels on it. It's a boat that got wheels. Oh, someone just, just put some wheels on a boat. It just looks like a ferry. It's a it's a ferry with wheels. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a boat that some wheels got on. They give you a little thing. <laughs> they give you a little thing. Have you been on a duck boat before? I have not. Oh man, it's the most touristy thing you can do. It really and, looks like uh, it. Uh, but <laughs> they give you a little uh, duck bill on a lanyard, and it's like a little duck call. And when I went on a trip to either D.C. or Chicago, I can't remember, they gave just a group of either third or fifth graders those little lanyards that make duck noises. And man, 
that had to be an annoying bus ride home <laughs> with all of the duck noises constantly from a group of 30 children. One last thing. We didn't answer anything about duck boats, but there that wasn't that interesting. You know, like inflatable rafts? Mm-hmm. Are those are people? Those, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Can you deflate oh. that, that person and, and compress him? Lucas? Yeah, what's up, bud? I would say no, but then I would think, would the people who make cars say no to that? They certainly wouldn't. They would I say am, yes. Mm. They would they would definitely say yes. And it would be played for a laugh. And what would happen is someone would like get one of those boats and like it it'd be Mater, he's like on a, a big old boat, like a cruise ship, and then like his hook gets caught onto one of those things, accidentally pulls the cord, one of those rafts just inflate like crazy, and then he's gonna just be like, Oh freedom and then he's gonna get like blown away and then he like screams and that's gonna be the whole scene. And like kids will think, ha ha, that's funny. And then you and I are going to be sitting there like, oh man, he's been, he's been squeezed into a tight little ball for his entire life and is just dead now. Uh, that's a person. Okay. It's a person who can be deflated. Okay. Once he's inflated, do you think he can be deflated again? And he will, I don't know, continue living? Uh, due to the rules of the Cars universe, I have to assume that he can be inflated and deflated, and that he'll be fine. Yeah, because yeah, because it serves he would still have purpose. to. I I would think because he has to like still fulfill like his purpose as a vehicle. It, it seems to be like a big thing for them. They can't make things useless. Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay, he can be deflated. That sucks. Where's his squishy bits? He's a squishy bit. His whole thing. He's squishy because he's, he's plastic with air in him. Mm-hmm. And his okay. squishy bit is the rest of him. There's going to be one uh, part so of the it... boat where you're like poking it. And it's like, huh, this doesn't feel the same. And that's the squishy bit. Okay. But do non-motored vehicles have sentience? Have we ever seen like a sailboat? Well, lots of sailboats have backup motors. We've seen especially like nowadays. The, the birds not having sentience but also not being a motored vehicle oh that's an animal then oh no that's worse (laughs) yeah Yeah. we have said that that since the bicycle was shown to be like a deer that would mean engines make you sentient so we've just stuffed an animal we've okay we've compressed an animal for our own safety we ride animals that have been dehydrated and stuffed into oh boy ugh ugh I don't like this one. Like, I'm glad we're making some points vis-a-vis the Cars universe. Not political ones, but, though. Hey, man, I'll take what we can get at this point. But, huh. And there's, like, more than one, certainly. On a cruise ship, there's, like, a bunch of them. Like, they have their normal lifeboats, of course, which would also be uh, people, I guess. Because I think, I don't know. Hey, Liz! What? Do lifeboats... Like on cruise ships, usually have motors, or are they just boats so you can float? Um, they have motors. Okay, sources say they do have motors, so those are just people who hang out in the air on the boat in case, just in case. <laughs> Dehydrated people. No, I'm I'm talking like the the ones that like are attached to the side of the uh, ship, okay. not the dehydrated ones. Not the. <laughs> yes, th- those also exist on like big boats. But we have the dehydrated animals and then like the wooden like lifeboats, which are also people who just are hoisted into the air and just hung until the your your big boat dies or is gravely injured. Hmm. <laughs> OK, hmm. cruise ships has more, huh, more meat on the boat than I maybe thought it would. Yep. 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 OK, let's stop talking. All right. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. So, okay. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, send us an email telling us how much you just despise your local politician or how great they are if they're specifically like actually a good person, which they're politicians. So how good can they be? Uh, but like, if you do have a story of about like a nice, good local politician, that would probably fill me with a, just a little bit of hope. We, we could really nice. use that sort of positivity in this world. <laughs> anyway, that email address is thekachat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at thekachat. 
Both of those are all one word, no hyphen in there. Uh, and you can DM us on there or email us uh, at that email if you want to send us a name for the wiki quote. Again, feel free to push an agenda. But again, if it's one we don't agree with, we probably won't. No, I'll go ahead and say we won't say it. It's our show. You can't say like make us say like some racist stuff. No one has tried. Like I want to make that clear. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> None of you have tried to make us say racist stuff, but I want like I guess establish that you we won't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, John. I'm Lucas. He's John. Uh, don't forget to vote. Like, like. Oh, also yes, vote. Also vote. And sting vote. like a beamer. <laughs> <laughs>